decades of space exploration has created a kind of junk-filled superhighway above the Earth, a racing debris field that puts crucial satellites in constant peril. Today, Canada did something about it, rocketing a satellite upwards to take on a critical mission, play traffic cop among all those dangerous galactic drivers. The CBC's Margot McDermott has the story. Even spectacular launches are routine these days. But on board this rocket, something unusual, Canada's first military satellite. Its mission, on guard for space junk. Understanding what's actually happening up in space is critical, and that's where Sapphire comes in. Sapphire looks pretty unassuming. It was designed and built for the Department of National Defense to be a key watchdog against a blizzard of space debris. That debris has been growing since the first rocket was launched in the 1950s. Each space mission since has left bits of equipment behind. There are now more than 22,000 pieces of junk the size of a baseball or larger orbiting the Earth. There's a lot at stake. Satellites now operate everything from cell phones to weather forecasts to bank machines to GPS. A piece of space junk traveling at 35,000 kilometers an hour can destroy those essential services. This is, of course, the first part of it. Uh, we need certainly to get the system turned on. Brigadier General Rick Petrie heads Canada's military space program. He says Sapphire is designed to warn if that junk is going to take out Canadian satellites. If there is a potential collision, we're able to do something about it. So it's, a, it's like your traffic cop. This is the space junk that we're talking about. This is part of an old rocket casing, space junk that fell to Earth. It's on display at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base. A piece like this, specifically, hitting a satellite that's already in space, I mean, it would destroy it. This base is the nerve center, where every bit of space junk is catalogued and tracked. Right now, most of that is done by telescopes and radar on Earth. This is where Sapphire will report with information it gathers from above the Earth. Canadian Major Cameron Loudon is in charge of the international team that tracks space junk. He says Sapphire will have a much clearer view of the debris from space. We're putting up a space-based sensor now that's going to be, it's not going to be limited by weather or atmospheric conditions, so it's going to provide a 24-7 capability to this field. It's a SciSat. Okay. It's a satellite looking at the ozone layer. Michel Doyon will be relying on that information from Sapphire. He's in charge of moving Canada's three orbiting satellites out of the way of space junk. This is how it works. There's an alert from the nerve center in California, and Doyon has to quickly assess the chance of a collision. We have three days to figure things out. His team then sends a message to the satellite to fire up its thrusters to move it out of the way. And there have been close calls. A couple of years ago, a Canadian satellite came within 50 meters of a collision. On Earth, 50 meters is half a football field. So someone could say, well, why do you bother? But uh, because of the distances, it's, it's a very close call for us. But Sapphire is also able to do other things, like military surveillance, keeping Canada in the game that's now run from space. Keeping in the game, staying in the game, I think it's realizing clearly that we all have a responsibility here. Sapphire is now in orbit. Once it's up and running in a few months, the tiny satellite could provide a unique eye in the increasingly crowded sky. Margaret McDermott, CBC News, Ottawa. It was actually a very busy day on the launch pad. Sapphire was one of four Canadian satellites sent up. Our science correspondent, Bob McDonald, is here to talk about the others. So we know, Bob, what Sapphire is going to be up to. What about satellite number two? Well, satellite number two is called NEOSAT, and it's going to look for natural objects in space that could threaten us. If we look at it being assembled in the laboratory, NEOSAT isn't very large. It's only about the size of a suitcase. It's called a nano satellite, and that's because you don't need big, big telescopes to look for things that are close by. And if we look at what it's going to do in space, NEOSAT is going to be tracking asteroids that join the Earth as we travel around the sun. It's going to be looking at those that are between us and the sun and see if anything are, is heading our way. It's also going to do just a basic survey to see how many are out there because they think there are hundreds of thousands of them there, but we don't know where they are or what they like. So NEOSAT is just going to do the first space-based survey of what's really out there and could be heading our way. And the other two satellites are, are matching and smaller. What will they be up to? 
Yeah, they're really neat. They're called bright, and they're even tinier. If we look at these things being built together, you could put them under your coat. Little tiny cubes that are only 20 centimeters on a side, and they're going to be looking at the brightest stars in the sky, the, the ones that you see when you look up with your eyes that give you the Big Dipper. These stars, believe it or not, haven't actually been looked at that much, and you don't need a big telescope because they're so bright. So that's what that's going to be doing. And this is the future, Diana. This is what Canada does really well, build small satellites, put them up on other people's rockets, and it's a really inexpensive way to do good science in space. Thanks, Bob, as always. Okay, Diana.